The Detroit Red Wings, Hockey Town, a team with a storied past full of glory. Once a near automatic playoff team, the Red Wings were constantly in the postseason, being amongst the top teams in the NHL each season. Having legendary players in their past like Gordie Howe, Steve Eiserman, Pavel Datsuk, and Nicholas Lidstrom made this easy. But gone are the days of legendary players stepping onto the ice for this organization. Making the playoffs for 25 straight seasons, Red Wings management loaded up their dressing room with Hall of Famers, resulting in four championships in 1997, 1998, 2002, and 2008. Since deciding to rebuild at the end of their long playoff run, the success of the franchise has completely changed its course, and in 2019 specifically, the franchise would welcome back one of their own, Steve Eiserman, a beloved captain and Hall of Famer, naming him as their new general manager. After orchestrating a successful era in Tampa Bay, Eiserman returned to Detroit, setting the stage for his ambitious plan to rejuvenate the franchise. Since 2019, Eiserman's tenure and rebuilding process has been known as the Eiser Plan, which puts a heavy focus on drafting and developing players in-house to build out a competitive and sustainable roster. Eiserman also emphasizes the importance of signing and trading for quality players, who would be able to push this roster to another level, all without offering up assets that he deemed to be essential to their rebuild. Thus, the Red Wings' new lineup was created, containing players like Dylan Larkin, Maurice Sider, Alex Debrinkit, Patrick Kane, and Lucas Raymond, all brilliant talents who have yet to see any playoff games under Eiserman's tenure. As we look to the future, the Red Wings are positioned for growth. At least that's what everybody keeps saying. But is it true? Well, after a bit of a polarizing start to their season and some mismanagement at certain roster positions, the Iser plan that once received a ton of praise is now being a little bit more criticized than it has been in the past. So let's break down the Detroit Red Wings to figure out if the Iser plan is worth continuing or if it's become a complete bust, sending the Detroit Red Wings into an endless void of mediocrity. The Detroit Red Wings are a team that a lot of hockey fans consider to be in the void, a term used to describe mediocre and directionless hockey teams across the NHL. After eight years of missing the postseason, five years being under Eiserman's tenure, fans have grown anxious about the plan that he has for this organization. Without having a top four pick throughout his tenure and missing the playoffs each year, it's understandable why fans have grown aggravated with this GM and the direction he's looking to take this franchise in. So let's break down every facet of this roster and explain why this season is going to be massive for the tenure of Eiserman and for the Red Wings' future. Largely recognized as a strong GM who put the Tampa Bay Lightning back on the map, Stevie Y is the one responsible for this team's mediocrity. But for years, he was praised for slowly pushing the Red Wings forward in their rebuilding process. Lately, however, this praise has turned into criticism, with the team lacking an NHL-level defensive core and a true goalie to help them manage and win enough games to qualify for postseason hockey. This season, both of those issues have been exposed through the first few weeks of the season, and unfortunately, there's no plan to fix this in the immediate future. Let's talk about fundamentals with Stevie Y. While he was with the Tampa Bay Lightning, it seemed like he understood the idea of how to build a roster. Lately, we've seen that Stanley Cup champions are more built around their defense, having stars at the top and then depth underneath. Also, having a pretty strong goalie behind them, whether it's an elite Vesna winner or just a guy who's capable of making high-end saves. When it comes to his Detroit Red Wings tenure, he's done the complete opposite. Yes, he's acquired a lot of talent for their offense, but their blue line outside of Mo Sider has been underwhelming, and their goaltending has just been a disaster. Outside of Sider, the Wings blue line has been stretched thin based on their overall talent and potential. Edvinson has shown some promise, but he's still very young and brings growing pains to this group. To me, Sheriat and Petrie are the ones who should take most of the blame for the defensive struggles of the Red Wings. Both guys have been sloppy to start the year, and if you remember last season, they couldn't get out of their own way and help the Red Wings win a single game, which is why they eventually didn't make the playoffs after having what seemed like a promising start to their year. Justin Hall has also been a bit of a disaster, being moved down to the third line, and just like his Toronto days, he leaves much to be desired. A lot of people talk about the Red Wings defense being average and maybe even at times above average in some ways, but in my eyes, Red Wings hockey is predicated on their offense. They have to score so much to relieve the pressure from the defense to allow them to win any sort of game, and that's just not the way that hockey is played in 2024. This defense needs some sort of bona fide star to help outsider. 
I'm not saying you need a Kale McCarr, Miro Heiskanen type level guy, but maybe a Devon Taze or Hampus Lindholm sort of player. Someone who could take off some of the pressure from Sider and add a little bit more consistency to the lineup than some of the other guys have had for this defensive group. It's just been a disaster. And when it comes to their defense, this is starting to affect other areas of this team, something that segues perfectly into the next thing I want to talk about. Let me preface this by saying goaltending is ultimately determined by how well the team structures their blue line. This is no secret. There are always some outliers like Shosturkin or Vasilevsky who can make up for sloppy defenses. But traditionally, if you have a bad defense, your goaltending is also going to be bad. For Detroit, they seem to have found the perfect sweet spot of mediocre in both of these categories. Last year, their goaltending was incredibly inconsistent. They used three starters in Huso, Lyon, and Reimer. This year, they're running it back with Huso and Lyon, but also bringing in the addition of former Kings goalie Cam Talbot. All three of these goalies have played well through stretches in their career, but Lyon and Huso have shown that they are not capable of being starter level goalies. And while Talbot has found some life in his game recently, he's on the tail end of his career and will not be the long term solution for this organization. Last season, the Red Wings averaged a team 902 save percentage and 3.33 goals against average through the season. I expect this number to go up with the play of Talbot and in some cases Lyon, but right now Huso has been sent down to play with the Griffins, and neither of these guys will be consistent enough behind that defense to really make things work in the end. Now the Red Wings do have a few goalies in their prospect system, but it seems like neither of them have really panned out so far. These guys are still young and will likely be the future for the organization, but for now, the Red Wings goaltending just seems like it's in shambles. At times, Lyon can be the guy, at times it's going to be Talbot, and even Huso in some cases. But neither of these three guys have shown that they're going to be capable of leading the Red Wings to the playoffs on a consistent night-in, night-out basis. So for Talbot, yeah, it was a good pickup and maybe a temporary fix to a long-term problem, but for a team that's ready to make the playoffs now and hopefully in the future, it just makes you scratch your head about what they were thinking when it comes to bringing in a goalie, especially when there's some other guys out there like Linus Allmark who they easily could have acquired. Now that we've talked about the defense and the goaltending, we have to talk about the offense and why this has become a bit of a problem for the Red Wings on top of all of their other concerns. Their top line of Debrinket, Larkin, and Raymond is spectacular, but like other areas of this roster, sometimes these players can be a bit inconsistent. First, Dylan Larkin. Starting this off, he's a stud, star player in this league, amazing captain, and underrated talent. There's no question about that. The problem is with him, though, is the injuries. Last year with Larkin out of the lineup, the Red Wings struggled immensely, going from a top three team in the Atlantic Division all the way back down to a wildcard team. If Larkin can stay fully healthy all year, then this offense will put points on the board and counteract their bad defensive play, which will translate to more wins on their record. But should he get hurt, then this team will likely have a hard time keeping up with the rest of the Atlantic Division competition. Lucas Raymond, also spectacular talent, has progressively improved each passing year. And after signing a new eight-year deal this offseason, he will need to take an even bigger step in his development to push this team further into contention. Raymond and Larkin are the two guys who I'm least concerned about when it comes to this offense. In fact, I think one player, Alex Debrinkit, needs to be more productive this year when it comes to getting more goals into the back of the net. In Chicago, Debrinkit managed to score 40 goals, and something I feel the Red Wings are lacking in is a true goal scorer who can make plays off of Larkin. Raymond has shown that he's capable of doing this, but Debrinkit, eh, not so much lately. To start the year last season, Debrinkit had double-digit goals within the first month, and fell off pretty hard in that category, only reaching 27 total last year and having a brutal goalless stretch. The Wings offense also suffered a few losses in free agency, and the only player who they brought in to replace this scoring from last year was Vladimir Tarasenko, who don't get me wrong, will be able to do a lot on the ice, but in terms of being able to get a high production out of other players, I think Alex Dabrinka is the name that needs to be called out here, because I know he's capable of being at least a 30-40 to 40 goal scorer, he just needs to find his game again. Now outside of their top line, the Red Wings truly lack depth. Now, I know they have Kane and Tarasenko on that second line, which isn't a bad thing, but already to start the year, the team hasn't been happy with the production of both of their lines, moving Kane and Debrinket around to try to get something going, which just hasn't happened yet. In fact, in their game against the New York Islanders, the Red Wings only managed to get 10 shots on net, something that I think speaks more about the Islanders' offense than it does the Detroit Red Wings. But still, players came out afterwards saying they were happy to get the win, but the offense definitely needs to improve. So in my eyes, I do think that the Iser plan has worked in some ways, but in other ways, I just feel like it's sort of fallen flat. 
if they want to move forward with Stevie Y and they don't want to just get rid of him and start anew, I think something they need to start putting more importance into is the defense and their goaltending. The offense has a pretty good core group of guys, but the depth is lacking. So maybe try to move off from some of your draft picks, try to acquire a star through free agency if they become available. Truly make a move for players who are going to be difference makers in areas that you're lacking in. Don't be afraid to go out and get a Linus Allmark or a John Gibson to help you win a few more games. Don't be afraid of what a playoff run could look like even if you get bounced in the first round. You're not drafting in the top 10 most years, so it's not like you're getting those game-changing players. Sometimes it can work out, sometimes it doesn't, but for the Red Wings, lately, it just feels like things haven't been working, so at least try a new approach, and if it doesn't work, hey, at least you tried all of your options, and then we can make a clear, definitive statement on the Eiser plan in general. But this is just my overall reaction to the Red Wings so far this season. I personally still think that they're going to make the playoffs, but I think that that's going to be predicated on them making a few moves to improve this defense. I'm not completely flat on their goaltending because I do think Cam Talbot's going to be consistent enough for them to get into the postseason, but not behind this current defense. I don't know if that means they have to bring in players or bring up players, whatever they have to do to fix it though. But let me know what you guys think about the overall message for the Detroit Red Wings. Do you think that this team is going to make the playoffs in a highly competitive division? Or do you think that the Iser plan has grown old and that this team is never going to move forward if Stevie Y just doesn't change his mindset on this whole overall rebuild? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let's have a good discussion as always. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I will see you guys in the next one.